Welcome to this short lecture on labor demand. Our goal in this lecture is going to be to take the firm's perspective, since firms are going to be the ones demanding the labor, and think about how they make the choice of, given some wage, how many people would I like to hire, or how many hours of labor would I like to hire? Uh, what goes into that choice? Can we derive some rules for how that choice is made, kind of like we had MR equals MC for how the firm chooses its quantity? Uh, we'll get a similar equation for how it chooses how much labor to hire, and then we can apply that equation to think about plotting the labor demand curve and um, working with some examples, doing some calculations. So our starting point is saying, you know, the point of hiring labor is because it, the more people you hire, presumably the more output you can make, and then if you make more output, you can sell it and make money. And we've assumed that the goal of the firm is to make as much profit as possible. So a good starting important concept for thinking about labor demand is what I've written here, marginal product of labor. As we remember, marginal quantities are always about extra. So this is the extra product you get, the extra output product uh, for some number of extra units of labor. So if we were gonna give an equation for marginal product of labor, MPL, it would be extra output, so delta Q over extra labor hired, so delta L. We'll use L to denote labor. This is basically telling us about the benefits of hiring more workers, but it doesn't tell us the benefits in uh, dollar value. So another important concept is what we call the value of the marginal product of labor, or value of MPL, and that's just going to be whatever the price of that output good is times the MPL. Because this tells us in dollar terms how much is that extra output worth. If I hire one more worker, what is going to be my extra output? And then multiply that by the price to tell me how much is that extra output worth. So that's basically how much extra money the firm has brought in. Um, as long as that extra money the firm gets is bigger than the extra cost it has to pay from hiring the worker, then the firm is going to want to continue to hire. So kind of like with our marginal revenue equals marginal cost equation, um, we're going to get a, an equation here that says keep hiring workers as long as the value of the marginal product of labor is greater than or equal to the cost of hiring workers. So thus our key condition is P times MPL equals, and now we just have to think about, well, what is the cost of hiring a worker for one hour? Um, and as the book tells you, the, the standard word for that is wage, so we'll just use W to denote that. So this equation here tells us implicitly our labor demand. If we have a, a price and a marginal product of labor function and a wage, we can solve this equation for L and find the amount of labor people want to hire, that the firm wants to hire. It doesn't look like it's an equation about L. In fact, you don't really see the L anywhere except in the subscript. But that was true with MC equals MR. Remember, with MC equals MR, it was really an equation about Q and picking the quantity, even though the Qs are typically suppressed and you don't really see them. That's actually what it's all about. It's similarly the case that even though you don't see much about the L here, it's really all about picking L. So let's see how this works in practice with an example. Suppose we're selling uh, cupcakes and the cupcakes each cost $2. And then I'm thinking about how many extra you know, student workers I'm gonna hire, how many hours of student work I'm gonna hire uh, to help bake more cupcakes. Well, as I hire more people to work in the kitchen, then I'll get more output, but I wanna know how much more output, that tells me my marginal product of labor. Let's suppose it's really simple, something like six minus L. And you notice that this is a decreasing function of L. So the first person I hire, the marginal product is going to be pretty big, like five and a half. Uh, as I hire more and more people, it gets smaller and smaller, right? As L gets bigger, the marginal product falls. And uh, that's pretty typical. We call that diminishing marginal returns um, or diminishing marginal product. So that's not too surprising. Now we can put these two guys together with our key equation. So plugging in the specific values we have. We have two times six minus L equals our wage. We can distribute, get 12 minus two L equal W. This is our labor demand function. If we wanted to plot our labor demand, we can just go ahead and take this equation, go over onto the graph and plot this bad boy. Um, because the format we like to have things in when we plot, since we have the wage, 
the wage here being the price basically of labor. So we use W instead of P. We like that on the vertical axis, so we like the equation on the form W equals blah, blah, blah. Uh, so we can see it has an intercept at 12, has a slope of negative two, X intercept or L intercept, I guess, is six. So we plot that, it's a straight line, and that's our labor demand. Uh, in terms of working with the equations, we really don't like it in the form it's written in right now because we'd like a labor demand function to be like quantity as a function of the wage equals blah, blah, blah. So we need to rearrange this guy, put the L's all on one side, uh, and have L equal stuff. So let's put the L's over on the left. Uh, we have 2L equals 12 minus W. Then we can divide everything by 2, cancel the 2, and we get L equals 6 minus W over 2, and that is our labor demand function. So using our key equation, value of marginal product of labor equals wage, uh, we set up an equation. We could plot that equation and get our labor demand. We saw that over on the right. Or we could uh, rearrange that equation and get our standard labor demand equation the way we like to have it written out. Um, the important thing here is really understanding this key equation, value of marginal product equals the wage. It's sort of the labor demand equivalent of MC equals MR for the firm. Um, once you understand that, I think it's usually fairly straightforward to go and take this in the abstract and apply it to a specific situation, either graphically or algebraically.